Yeah, I like the contrast between like things like having like I think the contrast that I really like is more on beyond the press and we can have like like uh, half a million euro like worth of cameras like high speed cameras and then we like might film like shooting sausages out from like air cannon or something like really stupid that there's like this like high end university tech type of stuff and then we have like something like really stupid that like 10 years old kids would like find funny and I, I really like the like mismatch there Welcome to the 2.5 Conversations Connecting Innovators. My name is Klaus. I'm an innovation coach in Baden-Württemberg in the southwest of Germany. Innovators and creators from around the globe help each other by sharing highs and lows, their motivation and creative passions, as well as their favorite methods, tools and ideas. The name of the podcast comes from the 2.5% innovators from Roger's Diffusion of Innovation Theory. Find more details, all the episodes and transcripts at the 2.5.net. Enjoy the show. My guest today is Lauri. He's from Finland and he's a creative experimenter. Welcome, Lauri. Sorry for not mentioning your last name. I practiced it, but I can't pronounce it. Yeah, it's Wohensilda. It's it's pretty hard. But you, you manage well with the Lauri, even that's like usually pretty hard. Yeah, if I'm in like US or somewhere that, that they have Starbucks, there is the like the processes that you tell your name, then they write it on the paper. And then somebody else is going to read it out loud that your coffee is ready. And I never say Lauri to that. I say that I'm Mike or something. So, so, so it's easier for them. Yes. English names are not like designed to be read in English. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have a uh, you have a very special way, I think, to pronounce these uh, y your words. I have been to Finland before. I have enjoyed uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, architecture by Alva Alto, for example. So I'm uh, familiar with that, um, and I'm I really like your country. I think it's a very special place. Yeah, it's 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 different. It has its pluses and minuses, but but like generally, I really like it. There isn't like. The stuff that I don't like is like really minor. We have really well all, all the like things that really matter are re really well here. We wanted to talk about everything related on being creative and getting good ideas today. And um, uh, you have a lot of good ideas. You have translated a lot of good ideas in a lot of cool stuff. And I think we have to talk about what you do first because else people wouldn't understand what we are talking about right now. You said you take risks all in the name of science in one of your videos. <laughs> and there's so much more uh, uh, to, to quote you. Uh, but I wanted, uh, what do you do? Yeah, I think like that. I do, I do quite a lot of things that are not like so visible to people as my work is. But like the my work that is like the thing that people are most familiar, I'm professional youtubers slash like uh, mad scientist we have a couple youtube channels the hydraulic press channel is the like first and the main thing and it's it's that's like my hobby not hobby that's my work <laughs> it pays the bills and then i have more like a hobby type of channel beyond the press that is like i tend to call it like mythbusters but like russian style like bit less budget and like uh, more stupid ideas and less polished and like but then it's like and we don't have any like just the mythbusters they had to have like myth that something happens when you do something we don't have any of that i just like come up the like craziest ideas possible and then we just do them just because we can <laughs> and on the press channel we just crush things and try to make things Test materials, do all, all, almost anything that you can use hydraulic press for. And I have done every Saturday video for seven years straight. Wow. So you have to be pretty creative to like get, get yes. so many use cases for for 
simple machine like press. We will provide links uh, to your channels in the show notes. But let's sort of recap what you do, because it's sort of a crazy thing, I think, because it's, well, it's not that usual to do. Uh, and when I saw it first, I was really, really, really amazed by it. Uh, you have some sort of workshop. You have a big hydraulic press thing. It's like a big metal thing that comes down from above with a lot of pressure and it squeezes something, for example. Yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Like, <laughs> and then you can add that different things. There's like, there's like big part that comes down with a lot of force, and then you can add that whatever you want to build to that. So that you can like add lot by different attachments there. So mm -hmm. you can like add cylinders and things can have holes and like stuff like that. So it's it's more about and then we have force sensor, so you can like test how strong things are. So it started as and just like put something there and squeeze it. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, I would say that's about half of the content. And then the other half is like uh, everything else that you can use the machine for. Yes. And we, we need to talk about that also, how, how that evolved and how you, you added stuff to that uh, to that basic idea. But actually, it's a very, very simple thing that you started here. Uh, it's It seems simple, at least for and then you start to add all these extra tools and, and extra you, you machine also special things to make get a better effect, for example, or test another hypothesis. And uh, that is... Um, a very weird thing to watch when something is getting squeezed, for example. Um, do you do you have any recollection of how you had the what the, was the first, not the first thing you squeezed, but how did you come up to use that thing that is used in a workshop for metal works and stuff like that uh, for fun stuff? It's actually. Um... It's a, it's a, I think it, I like the story. It's it's a good story how I got the like idea for the for the YouTube channel. Me and my wife we have had like always like crazy ideas, <laughs> but uh, most of them are just like some small stupid thing that nobody else like understands, and we like think that this is like the best thing ever, and then we like make it and put it out, and nobody cares. That was like. <laughs> our typical thing <laughs> but i think i think we had like two small audience because we tend to do before this we always did everything in finnish and finland is so small country mm -hmm. and we had we didn't have like large voice enough so there wasn't like any there was so small amount of people reach it out that the ideas were like too weird and only like 100 people like it when you get it out for like 10,000 and 100 people likes that's not enough But when you get it out to like 3 billion and like 5 million likes, then it's like, that's pretty good. So the like one thing that set this apart from the rest was the fact that we decided to do it in English and go international from like day one. Mm -hmm. And I got the like the idea to do like English YouTube channel from watching YouTube. I used to, I still watch a lot of YouTube. I don't watch TV at all. It has been like probably like 12 years or something like that. I mainly watch YouTube. And first my like dream was to have like powerlifting channel. But I realized that my English skills, especially back in the day, they weren't good enough for that. <laughs> okay. So that that's like out of the window. And then I stumbled on uh, videos where guy had like red hot nickel ball and he just... He taps the nickel ball and it's red hot and places it on top of some item like ice cube or cell phone or something like that. And the videos were really popular and I, I really liked them because it's like also captivating like my videos. You, you start to think what would happen when the ball goes on top of that. And then you have the idea in your head that this is probably going to happen and I am right or not, and you have to watch it. And I, mm -hmm. I, I got the feeling that this video type is like really interesting to watch. And also the fact that the guy used like 15 minutes per video at his garage to do those, so it's like easy to do. And I thought that there is no reason why I wouldn't be able to make something similar. Because we have the workshop with like 
lot of different tools and machines and stuff. So there has to be something like something that I can use to make like similar video format. And then I, I thought like milling machine. And then I thought like, it's, it's not going to work. Like you cannot add that like banana, banana to the like wise or something like that. It, it doesn't work for the most of the items. And then I thought like melting stuff with the like torch or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I also thought that it's, it's not good. I can like make five videos and that's about it. And then I realized with the press, you just place something there, pull from the lever, and something happens, that's for sure. With <laughs> ed- every item, something is going to happen. And probably going to be also interesting. And then I went to went to YouTube because every time when you get a good idea, my first thought is this two good ideas, somebody has already done this. But this time nobody hasn't done that before. There wasn't any like videos of people crushing stuff with the presses and then i realized yes this is this is really good and uh and all this happened with my wife i i started to like talk about this red hot nickel balls we were walking outside in the forest and i said that i have seen these videos and we, we should do something similar and my wife was also excited about this like idea of again having some stupid idea <laughs> And then I checked the fact in the forest from my cell phone that there isn't any videos like this. And then we we decided that the channel name should be Hydraulic Press Channel. Like, how stupid idea is that, that there's like channel for <laughs> Hydraulic Presses. That, that sounds like really stupid. And then we thought that we should have like professional intro and outro and like do it like, like it looks like a real thing. And it would be so, so stupid and fun. And... Then we started to talk that what we should crush first. And we had like ideas like golf balls and like regular stuff that we did as in first videos. And then I got the idea that we should try, can you fold paper more than seven times with the press? Mm -hmm. Because the folding, like it's hard, but with press you have unlimited force. So should work. And I I realized that that's like, that's the like best idea ever. It's so interesting because you, you think about it and, think yeah surely you can but then you think more and then you realize there has to be some problem there that you just don't know yet before you try and i i realized that that idea is so good that we cannot do it like as in first video we have to like get five videos out and then do that and then the paper video goes viral and tada we have a youtube channel (laughs) and then we filmed like five videos and then the paper video and it was 2015 and we were so like excited about the idea that we didn't do like any research how youtube really works so we thought that you just put stuff out there and then then you get the views but it doesn't work like that you have to like promote it somewhere and get it like rolling so we didn't get any views in like end of the 2015 when we started but then in start of 2016, somebody did the work for us that we should do by ourselves by like getting the ball rolling by posting the paper folding video on Reddit. Mm-hmm. And then it got a lot of views and traffic from there. And then it just started to go crazy. We got like 2 million views in first day. And then we just started to film a lot of videos and Never stop after that. You say yourself it's a crazy idea. You use the word stupid and stuff like that or words like that. And um, actually, it's kind of crazy and stupid or whatever you could call it, right? It's something yeah. so special. There is no category for it, basically. Uh, it's, But it's not crazy. It's not stupid because you put lots of effort in all this. You have a, uh, like an ex- scientific expro- approach also to, to when, whenever you do a new video. Uh, this is what I think is very fascinating, right? It's not just the big work that you need to do with the preparation, but you also have like uh, uh, predictions in the beginning. You sort of experiment with uh, with these materials and build on other experiments that you have done before. And I think that's so fascinating in that mix of so many areas which are partly contradictory to each other. Yeah, I like the contrast between like 
things like having like I think the contrast that I really like is more on beyond the press center. We can have like like uh, half a million euro like worth of cameras, like high speed cameras, and then we like might film like shooting sausages out from like air cannon or something like really stupid <laughs> yes that there's like this like high-end university tech type of stuff and then we have like something like really stupid that like 10 years old kids would like fun funny <laughs> and i i really like the like mismatch there mm-hmm. and i i think also with the like the actual like the channel name the like concept of having like channel where you just cross stuff it sounds like Sounds like it's from like some movie. Like, do you know movie Idiot Crazy, where like every every people are, are like really really dumb. Like, it's like in future and everybody has turned really dumb. And okay. I think on, on that university there should be like hydraulic press channel st- type of stuff go- going on TV and people just watch things going like crush it. <laughs> it's like very simple simple entertainment form, and then it's like fun to see how how far you can push it in with like getting like high tech stuff and com- complex questions there. If you have a close look and you show all these things also, uh, you have, you need a lot of protection because these things tend to explode or fly around in your workshop. Uh, there is a uh, unexpected results. Sometimes things fly across you into the window and destroy that, for example. Um, and, uh, then, so you need the protection thing. Uh, you probably experimented a lot to get the right thing there. Uh, the cameras, you mentioned that you're machining special tools and tubes, uh, to sort of of get special effects like uh, stuff with holes where you squeeze candles that make uh, long long spaghetti like things in in the air uh, and, and stuff like that right so it's a lot of preparation that goes into that and a lot of um, yeah basically machining tooling preparing and, and, and so on what I also think is interesting is that you always, make a prediction together with your wife or you make a bet of how the the experiment turns out uh that's kind of funny because you sort of don't know how it turns out but you do sort of make a make it fun also on that side and and you laugh when you are wrong for example usually usually something that like i'm like predicting what's going to happen and on most of stuff you just could calculate what's going to happen but i i think that's like boring so i don't i i only calculate things that affect on like safety i never calculate like uh like more than that so it's like whatever happens it's going to be surprise also for me so it's it's something that you you sometimes you know what's going to happen and sometimes you don't or but you have ideas so it's sort of an experiment uh and you 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 learn from that because you also measure uh, so we always see how much tons of pressure for example you apply um and then you um, compare it for example to an older video and then you sort of base your next video maybe some some videos down down the line uh based on these experiments also so that's a very very subtle scientific approach also yeah and it also like the uh, most typical like video series is the fact the type of video series where i do something and it turns out it's slightly dangerous and then people like say that you should do this even more dangerous thing <laughs> and then i do that and then <laughs> then you can see that you can make it like even more stupid and then <laughs> then i end up also doing that I think that's the like uh, easiest way to get like uh, popular video ideas is to think something that sounds really dangerous and then try to do that in a safe way. Yes, that's the like uh, easiest way to do like viral videos. <laughs> so you basically set out to do viral videos. So that's always is it like always your goal or? Yeah, you you cannot like always to aim that because. It, it takes a lot to do like viral video. So I tend to like have like different kind of periods on the channel. For example, during the summer, people don't watch so much. So I do like 
videos that I think are not so popular or like videos that are so weird that they might be popular or might be like really bad. So I just like do a bit easier videos during the summer. And then this time of the year, it's like people watch a lot. I think it's because of the winter and like bad weather and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also the like uh, ad revenue is better during end of the year because there's like Black Friday and Christmas and everything coming. So I pile up all the best ideas on the end of the year. And now I I try to like to make viral video with every video that I do. Of course, you don't like get it every time. But like for my channel, like regular good video is like 200,000 views. And then the viral video is 10 million views. So 10 million is 50 times more than 200,000. So if you get one viral video, that same thing as you do like basic good video for the whole year, every Saturday. Mm. So like aiming for the viral videos is like, it's like, I think it's like easiest way to make a living, living with this, this type of content. We have to say that you, your, your channel has currently about 706 million uh, views pro approximately. So that's a lot. Yeah. I've been doing that for seven years, approximately, doing a video basically every week. Um, that is lots of um, hard work. So it's not just about always having the best idea, but aiming for the best idea for you and then just doing the work also. Yeah. And the YouTube is only like one part of the thing. Then we have... We, we do like shorter videos to TikTok and Instagram. And also we start to post them on the YouTube on start of the uh, next year when they finally monetize the YouTube shorts. Mm -hmm. But on, for example, on TikTok, I think last year we made 1.5 billion views. So, so, so that's like stupid amount of like, <laughs> like, like a human life wasted on watching like stuff get crushed. <laughs> so, and you have to say it's really, really satisfying to watch uh, st yeah. stuff getting crushed, uh, and and that basically makes you probably the the two well known, most well known fins in the world. Yeah, I think it's like, I think like most of the like viewers that watch only like TikTok or Facebook or stuff like that. They don't probably know that we are from, from Finland because the, even on Facebook, we have only like three minute long videos usually. And on TikTok, it's like 15 seconds and we don't talk anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think like our like uh, uh, digital footprint is probably on the top end of the Finns. <laughs> I think we are not probably, probably like most of our viewers don't know that we are from Finland. So. Mm -hmm. What I can hear when you do the videos on YouTube, I'm not following TikTok, so I can't say anything about that, is with you, you, you do a lot of planning, you do a lot of work, uh, you put in lots of effort and uh, a, a lot of time to prepare, but also to clean up afterwards, I suppose. Um, but uh, in the videos, it shows that you too have a lot of um, fun and appreciation if something goes to plan or even better than planned or or maybe uh, if there is a surprising result you you really like that and it's it's fun for you to experience all these things uh, so it, it looks like the the actual moment of the pressing is something that is really really a happy time for you yeah I think it's it's a bit similar to uh, I would describe the feeling it's the same when you are fishing and you feel that there's something end of the line and then you reel it in and then if it's like a small fish you are like yeah got fish but then if it's like really giant fish then you are like yes this is this is great and i think like if if we are like crossing something and then it there's like huge explosion or something that we don't didn't expect i think that's the like it's like exciting moment to like see the piston go down and what's going to happen. And then if something like really great and like surprising happens, then it's like you are like surprised of the reaction. And also it's like feels like you have accomplished something like really big because you know that it's like people are going to like this. 
mm-hmm. there's like mix of like just seeing the reaction from the thing and knowing like this is like great content. How do you know that? Usually if it's like if you got a bit scared, it's like <laughs> usually all the best things are like scary. <laughs> if it's like really loud bang, and then you just check like, yeah, all the cameras are okay and everything is okay, then and then it's like, yes, this is going to be great because if I got scared. And the viewers are going to definitely like this. <laughs> or it it actually doesn't have to be like scary. If you got any like big emotion, like big, it's like really surprising or really funny or anything like strong feeling from the like reaction, then you know that the viewers are going to have the same feeling. And like the videos that like make you feel something, they are like usually they work really really well. You gauge that prediction of of success also to on your first impression on your first own emotion and you have learned that over time uh, that that is sort of a gauge for how successful that video can be because other people would be surprised or scared or su- also yeah yeah, okay. yeah sometimes sometimes it's like bit i think it's like the like uh, i know anything about youtube or so- social media in general but especially the youtube that it you you can have the like greatest greatest end result and the like most surprising or funniest thing ever but if you cannot explain it in the title and the thumbnail for the people then they are not going to like see it because you have to sell all the ideas on youtube with the titles and thumbnails Mm -hmm. so you have to like get content that really generates like emotions on viewers and then you have to be able to like describe the how great the video is going to be in like with a couple words and one small picture mm-hmm. okay um and and you always get the idea also to to sort of describe that i mean you have made hundreds of videos thousands i i sorry i didn't check uh, i didn't check the number but every time you have to come up with a new name new picture besides all the ideas for for squeezing yeah. uh and pressing and rolling and uh, pressuring and so and so forth so do you do that yourself along with your wife or do you have some support here yeah usually usually for youtube usually the like the video idea and that like general idea for the title and thumbnail they come like together the first thing about video that i plan is the title and thumbnail because I think quite many people do it in like wrong order. They film something and then they start to think what is the title and thumbnail. And then you have to like form the title and the thumbnail to the video. Mm -hmm. But I do first the title and thumbnail. Like this is the title and thumbnail that are going to work. And then I'm going to fit the video to them and not the other way around. So and sometimes there's like usually it's like i have like great idea but i cannot like describe that in title and thumbnail and uh, that that type of stuff ends up being on the summer because i think like people are going to enjoy it but it's not going to reach huge audience so mm-hmm. some ideas are like good but they just don't like work on youtube because you cannot get people to click them mm-hmm. but but that means that you have a sort of like a uh, a good place to to collect your ideas to so you have a, you sort of plan uh, uh, the the episodes. Let's put it that way. Um, you need to draft it or at least keep the ideas somewhere. Do you have like a like a notes app or something that you're using for that? Uh, yeah, I have like Excel sheet for the ideas. There is like I I write the ideas on how difficult they are to make. Okay how much they are going to make views and how sure I am about the views. So then I can like rate them like I want something that is going to make a lot of views with really high certainty, but it's like hard to make those I'm working on now. And now I, it's like worth of the effort, like it's worth, worth of the effort to put a lot of work there and this time of the year. And then on summer, I can do like videos that might get a lot of views, but are quite easy to do. 
Okay. But also there's high chance of that nobody cares. <laughs> and and then when I like I usually like start to work on the videos about like one one month before publishing. Then I have I think it's called is it tick tick? I think it's called that. Like it's like mobile app where you can like do to-do lists. So mm-hmm. I put the video idea there, and then I list all the things that I have to have to be able to make the video. And then I start to build things and order stuff like well ahead. So I get everything there that I need. And then I also like to like clump similar type of videos together. For example, if I I'm for example on this or next week I'm going to uh, film with liquid nitrogen. So I want to get like three videos that need liquid nitrogen and then I film them all in one day. Because it's so much preparation and you need special yeah, equipment yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I see. So so you you are curious about things. You are aiming for special things, let's say also at YouTube or special effects because that you know that they are going to be popular as a video. And you have a like a scientific approach where you experiment a lot. You base one video also on the on the success of the other uh, earlier ones. Uh, you're very organized. You have uh, some sort of tools that you use to collect your ideas. Do you have a special place where you get or time where you are creative, where you get these ideas? Yeah, it's like I'm not sure. Am I like weird in that sense, or like the like um, innovation consults wrong usually? Because when when talking about getting ideas, everybody tells, tells like you have to be like relaxed and don't push it and stuff like that. But I have to <laughs> have the opposite <laughs> opposite view. I I have like I can put on my calendar, like for example next Monday, get five ideas. And then I just force it. I might like just go through YouTube. For example, one thing that I do quite often is like to watch channels where people shoot guns against different objects, get ideas there. Would that work on the press or not? Or then I just like, I have this like really thick like uh, physics book. I just read it, like found like different reactions that materials can have and think about different like waves to generate explosions or f- turn some material into some some else or then I just like drive to hardware stores and like walk around the stores and like take the items on my hand and like feel them and wonder what's going to happen and would this be interesting or go through all my old videos and think like yeah this was popular this type of video could I use some uh, other material or item and bit similar tools, or can I redo this really popular video with like some new twist to it? Like for example, if if I have crushed hammers and that was really popular, then I can do a new video where I soak the hammers in liquid nitrogen to make them more brittle and then crush them again. So I I just, book time on my calendar and then just like just like try to get videos i think the video ideas i think the like most important thing is to get a lot of like uh, outside things into your brain i think it's hard for me to get ideas without any stimulus so i need to like see a lot of items or like watch videos or like study physics or something like that to like get something into my brain and then like sometimes it's hard for me to get good ideas because i know too much like it's a bit similar if you are like expert on some field and you have like been really really familiar how how work is done on that field so that starts to starts to limit your thinking when you know too much but then With my wife, she doesn't know almost anything about like mechanics and physics and stuff like that. So she might have like totally, totally like um, ideas that would never work, but they sound really good, Mm -hmm. but it just wouldn't work. But that's the like good starting point for something that could work. If, If 
if Anni gets an idea that it's really good but doesn't work, then I start to work like from something that works but it's not so good and try to find something from between that is a bit like this idea that doesn't work but sounds really good and this really boring one that works. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think it's important to have people on your team that don't know too much about the thing. Yeah, People that know like very little, they know like some words that you are using on your work and they like have seen it, but they don't really know how it works. Yeah. And then you can combine that with that expert knowledge uh, yeah. of whatever you need to do with the metal or whatever to make it really yeah. explode in a way that is... Uh, It's attention grabbing, for example. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you need several experiments also for one video, for example? Uh, I mean, you, you do every pressing thing is sort of a, an experiment, and sometimes they go wrong and don't really explode, for example. Sometimes there's things spent only, for example. Um, but uh, do you also do stuff that you film and don't show because it's just not spectacular enough, for example? Uh, Uh, on press channel, I tend to show everything because I want to I want to keep the channel as an like evolving story. So I show like everything. Of course, if there's like if I have really good streak that my five last videos are excellent and everything is going up, and I have video that's like didn't really prom deliver the, on the promise, I just save it for the later and do some other thing now. But then on the Beyond the Press channel, if we have like, we want to get some reaction and usually I do like small case, small scale test first, will it work at all? And then, then if I feel that it's going to work, then I do the big scale thing mm -hmm. after that. I mean, especially if you have to build some sort of tool, I just yeah, remember yeah. that um, cutting thing that cuts playing cards into half so they fly away for example yeah. that is something that you had to build uh, before and probably test yeah. also yeah and usually i i tend to like have the like i want to do this thing on the video but then if that doesn't work i have this and this as a like backup thing mm -hmm. or then i have some like plan if if for example something doesn't work on the first try then i have plan how to make it work maybe a bit like more boring way but still work somehow so it's like depends on the video quite much okay you have a workshop where you can do all these things so i suppose there is um, it's kind of uh, okay with the neighbors uh, when there is sound <laughs> louder sound Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, you do explode things also, or you, or you have the smashinator 5 million or something that yeah. makes a lot of noise. Is that something important for you to be sort of outside, away from everybody, somewhere in the forest, uh, uh, far away from everybody to create that noise? Or does it help you also to be, for example, more creative, to be outside, uh, away from everybody? Uh, we have done something in the like uh, on the workshop yard, things that are like noisy but not dangerous. And I think it's limiting slightly because sometimes there's like kids from the neighborhood, they pile up to watch things and like you have to like you have to think also other things than just the video. But if you are like middle of the forest, then you know that you don't have to worry about anybody else. You can just focus on the video that you are doing. And then there is like, when we have like some really stupid things like exploding Tesla or something <laughs> like that, then it's just like necessary for the safety to be like really far away from any, uh, everything. I've seen that video and uh, we are going to add a link to the show notes uh, to that video because that was um, something really special, I, I think. Uh, you, you said something like, this is really stupid, don't try this at home or doing things you shouldn't do at home, but it's powered by science, technology and madness. And it actually, it's not madness, it, it's sort of uh, just, uh, it seems mad what you do once in a while. Yeah, my favorite like phrase, I think we had a teaser at some point about it. 
I, I my like favorite thing to say is that uh, don't try this at home. We are professionals because we get paid to do this. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so it sounds like yeah, they are professionals, but then I ruin it by saying the, the fact that we are professionals only because we get paid. Yes. <laughs> uh, being professional doesn't say anything about your like qualifications. It just means that you are you are getting paid. Also, when you say something like "let's create a mess," um, I mean it's that's basically everything you need to know what uh, it's happening uh, afterwards in, in in the video. Um, and uh, pretty good is something that you like also, or yeah. something that like "oh, that was interesting." Um, so so it's it's a very mixed uh, the 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 audio that you give uh, with uh, with the video is always surprising i think but it's always you are involved in the whole thing uh very it seems very personal once in a while and then sometimes for example on next next uh next saturday we are releasing like explosion video and uh the like pressure away from the explosion was like a bit more than we thought <laughs> and there is there is some damage to the buildings <laughs> and And when I go to the in, into the like our small, like like small small building that we have next to the site, then I start to like swear in Finnish, and I I think I I know that people are going to really like that even if they have no idea what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I'm like so surprised that I switch from English to Finnish, that's like, I think people are going to like that um, a lot. Yes. Yeah, I guess. And sometimes it's just obvious what you're saying, right? Even if you don't yeah, understand yeah. it when it's in, in Finnish. Yeah. yeah. And one actually I got like um when we were talking about emotions and how you how you should like be able to like tell people that this is going to be great and surprising or something. I think the exploding the Tesla car, that's the perfect video because just the fact that people read that somebody exploded a a Tesla Model S, even the fact that like you hear somebody did something like that, I knew that like really many people are going to get really angry. Mm -hmm. And then really many people are got like, yeah, get that you green hippies for electric cars and stuff like that. I knew that there's like, there's like everybody is going to have some kind of strong opinion about the, about the video. And the funniest thing is that the, like people, I think the like first reaction is that like we are like hillbillies and like, drive like pickup trucks and stuff like that. But I, I drive Tesla myself. Yes. So it's like good twist on the video. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's oftentimes not what you actually expect, right? Yeah. Uh, also the outcome is always it, there's always a twist or, or oftentimes a, a twist uh, to it. Uh, for example, uh, you do you do a variance uh, on pressure, right? It's not just the press, for example. You also have that uh, tube where you simulate Uh, ocean two miles under the ocean uh, pressure in water and you squeeze things basically underwater in two miles yeah. below uh, the surface um, and and when you crush for example uh, potato chips in a in a bag uh, I was thinking that uh, the bag would explode or something but yeah. but it didn't it stayed closed for example and and st stuff like that makes it also really interesting and i myself when i watch it i make my own predictions uh, about the outcome and i'm really happy if things turn out to completely different than than predicted how important is boredom for you um, to get a new idea i mean finland is can be very vast in winter time it can be very dark for example um You could get bored easily, I suppose. Is that important for you to get, come up with new ideas? Mm, not really. I think I think if I'm bored, I tend not to get ideas when I'm bored. I have to be like stimulated to some some amount. But I, in general, I'm like I'm a guy that doesn't like to tolerate boredom really well. I I tend to have like really busy life, even outside of the work. So I think, 
I think it's like really easy to get bored on Finland, especially the, the actual the winter is not bad because you have like snow and everything to relate to that. But like this time of the year, the like, length of the day is like eight hours. Mm. There isn't snow. It's like zero degrees Celsius and it rains all the time. So you cannot do like almost anything on the outside. And it's dark when you go to work and it's dark when you come out from the work so it's like i think this is the like most boring time of the year but then when you get some snow it's like much more light because no it's white and you can do like all the winter stuff so it 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 gets better when the winter comes so once fall is over basically and yeah. everything is snowy yeah it's also yeah. beautiful because everything is white and frozen okay i see yeah. uh-huh uh, i understand What, what, what I'm trying to recap some of the things you said is um, you have always a clear aim before you shoot your videos. You prepare that thoroughly. You sometimes need to have special equipment that you have to produce. Uh, you have a lot of technical stuff like the uh, slow motion cameras are very expensive and special. It's not just a GoPro uh, that you aim at something. Then you also have a high production value because you have uh, several camera angles, for example. Um, you need to have some security safety stuff uh, uh, to not get hurt yourself, for example. Yeah. Um, you need to have the press, right? Um, or, or extras, uh, extra things that you need. Um, you start with uh, the thumbnail, which uh, I think is is an interesting st start because it's sort of a pitch. It's just a two se two word two sentence thing that you can uh, like an elevator pitch, right? You can yeah, communicate yeah, yeah, the idea re really easily to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, it's like the ultimate elevator pitch. It's like one sentence and picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. And and that way it's also very easy for you to for you ma to make it understand to yourself or to your wife or maybe to some collaborator that that needs to uh, be part of that also. And it builds um positive emotion if you think of oh I'm going to smash X uh, and then you're sort of looking forward to to the next Saturday when you actually started to starting to film uh, the whole thing. Okay, so but you're also trying to not get bored because you need the stimulus. You're looking actually uh, for stimuli. Is that the right word? I don't know. Uh, to get new ideas and and you you walk around. You base it on on data also on data you get from YouTube, for example, on on stuff that is uh, that was popular before. Uh, so so you have a very um, wide selection of things you base or uh, you start your, your creativity on. And what I also think is very interesting is that you have a, a very good sense of presentation, right? I mean, you're in a workshop, uh, you do all these different camera angles and actually we are talking about only a fraction of a second that is the, let's say, the important thing of the video, right? Something is exploding, squeezed or whatever. That's not a long time, but it's always a 10-minute video, for example. So it yeah. takes a lot of um, special presentation skills to put that together and make it interesting. Yeah, and uh, like using like lot of cameras, that's like one way to make it more interesting because uh, on the like earlier videos i like tend to crush something and then i just like hold it on my hand and explain what to happen this piece but that's not like interesting enough so by having like i have nowadays usually i have like two cameras running 100 frames per second 4k cameras if I don't have like real high speed camera, but even from those, I can first show it from like straight ahead. Then I can show it, slow it down from up here and then slow it down and maybe zoomed in from the front. And then maybe thousand frames or more high speed camera. And then I can like pile up all those replays on top of my explanation what happens. And therefore I can like have 20 seconds of happening, but the video is 10 minutes because I can slow it down, slow it down, slow it down so much and show it four times mm -hmm. and then talk through the results while doing that. So, mm -hmm. and I actually just today, because it seems it's, 
it's the, like um, competition is harder every year. And I just, today I made some like plans for future videos, how to get like average view longer. And um, my like reasoning is the fact that if you, you should have the press moving almost through the whole video. Okay. So I, I plan when I start to explain what's happening. Now I plan to like, like start showing the actual crossing like tool way above the like item being crushed. And the time that it took, takes to come down is the time where I explain what's going to happen. And you can slow it down also to... Yeah, yeah, I can slow it down and stuff like that. So people are like, I think I think like perfect YouTube video, there's like, like constantly interesting things happened. And also there has to be like a lot of explanations because most of the videos, if you just show what happens, then like people are not understand the whole scope of the thing and it's not so interesting. Yeah. So you have to be able to explain things, but also like keep like stuff happening all the time. And it's, 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 it's going to take again okay, more, more like work on, Filming and more work on editing, but I see. But that uh, what what I see also, what I hear is that you're constantly learning, constantly observing, improving, working on whatever you you are creating a new. You might repeat maybe an old idea or maybe it make it even more fancy. But you you sort of also use new techniques you you look at things you have a special aim for example to make things more interesting so people watch longer uh, and stuff like that are better entertained um is that something that bothers you that you have to improve all the time because you you have to not just because the outside is forcing you but it seems like that's something that you want to do Yeah, I, I think it's like the whole improving thing, it's like I have I have used a lot of time to think about that lately because uh, I'm also like I'm the like um uh, uh, how you would say that like the monetary value or like the revenue that the whole thing generates, that's also like quite big motivator for me. And I want to improve also on that side. And I have been like improving 20% every year. And it it's it starts to come really hard at this point. Especially when we, we had like usually usually like there is like pretty reasonable amount like crazy happenings each year, like good luck events. But I feel that I had really, really good luck the last year. And now I realize it that it's not probably the case this year that I have even better luck. So I'm I'm not probably going to be able to like keep my constant growing revenue this year. And that's like one thing that pushes me to like do all things like make more entertaining videos and use more time on editing, editing and stuff like that to like improve the revenue that the company makes. But it also it I feel that it's like impossible to keep that going on forever. Mm -hmm. So I have to like come up with the terms that there is like some level that I can reach and there there's probably some maximum for that. But uh, I'm also a guy that likes the like, like the grind and competition against like other channels and myself, like the last year's channel. And uh, yeah, I, I already forgot what was the question. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, the question was, I, I think you helped a lot or you answered a lot of, of my yeah. question. Uh, the, the question for me was, is is there something that sort of drives you to be better all the time? Because that can be a, a pain in the, you know what, some once yeah. in a while, right? Um, but sometimes it's it's just a thing that you have or yeah, that you feel inside that it's, it, there can be something better out there. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the revenue part is quite big part of it but there are then i have also this like i think some channels don't have any like pride on the work that they do they have like uh they clearly lie about things that are on the videos that they claim for example that we are going to explode this safe with the hand grenade mm -hmm. 
Mm. And then they clearly don't explode it with the real hand grenade. They use something else. So I have also like pride on my work. I want to keep like everything real. And then I don't want to like, I try to always give more than I, than I take from the viewers. That's the like, I want to like be able to improve the revenue, but also like always give more than I take from the viewers. That's like one thing. So if I know that I have like this sponsorship coming and they pay X amount for that, then I want to like, be sure to like deliver really good video that people are not like disappointed on that I watched this ad here and then the video was really poor. Mm-hmm. I want to always like do my best also with the viewers. And then then if I have like really good video, then I feel that this is going to be probably see watched by like five million v- people. Like five million people are going to use five minutes of their day. And then I feel that like like that that's my duty to like be sure that there isn't like, for example, one clip where the sound is too loud. And then the five million people are going to go, oh, that was too loud. Mm-hmm. And that's like a lot of suffering for a small mistake <laughs> on my end. Sometimes I like really, really start to think about things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see. Uh, you just mentioned advertising, and um, I, I think you have a very um, sensible way to do advertising. At least I, I remember some uh, um, where you, for example, show the security of a VPN uh, thingy uh, by sort of squeezing or pressing some tool that you have uh, sort of semi-destroyed first to show how bad things can be. And then you have it, it's like a wrench, an Allen wrench. Uh, you, show, you show the original and you say, okay, if it's good, uh, then it's that way, for example. And mm. even that, this, the advertisement is entertaining at that moment. Yeah, and then I, 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 and then I have like also because I'm doing like, we are doing like, quite well in terms of revenue. So for example, I don't advertise any mobile games or like any product that I wouldn't use myself. I also want to like uh, be honest on that way that I don't like promote any stuff that I wouldn't use myself. I think quite many, many channels, they don't, they, they don't have like strict policy like that, even if they make like way more money than I am making. So I want to also have some like uh some like um mm-hmm. yeah you, you have uh, like like your own pos- policy to uh, to sort of stay true to yourself and yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay be be also more um not effective but um convincing that way i think yeah Okay. Yeah. But what I also think is really interesting is that you you are I I think very good at branding things. Uh, for example, the Smashinator Five Million is a tool that you created yeah. with the pressure thing thingy, smashing stuff. And I I saw a video that uh, where you transformed the Smashinator Five Million to the Lake Smasher Ten Million and be, Ten Million because it was such a good thing to do right it would be so yeah. good and and that's funny uh but it's also it shows that there's some sort of branding uh, uh thing in you um branding experience uh maybe also fun in making up things and and words yeah it's actually i'm not sure do many people realize it but or no but i have like i'm quite well educated i have i have done like i'm not sure how they translate the Finnish school systems, but I have like, uh, is it like college is probably the school? And then I have gone, I, I went to like school that was combination of like trade school and college. So I'm like mechanic from that. So I can like build things. And then I went to a university of technology and I have, I have studied uh, automation, hydraulics and like um, marketing, machine safety, and like um, like production planning. I have only my master's thesis <laughs> to be done. And then I then I would be, ma- is it like master of te- technology or a master of science? Is that like, mm-hmm. word? I think I, I might do my master thesis on some day. You should. But I'm, 
but it's it's not like important for me. I don't need it for anything. But uh, I have studied a lot of like all things related to business and also uh, like the whole university physics. So I I know like how world works and it, it helps a lot of like to get ideas. I think some other channels, they uh, end up copying my videos because they don't kind of like get the ideas because usually, usually if you watch some like new tool or thing to be done. I have the first video and then all, all other press channels do the same after mm. they see that I, I have done it. Very rarely anybody else gets the like idea first. Well, that's good to know. And and you're saying you know about these things, you know about the physics behind that. And um, I don't know who said that, but I remember from my own studies, I studied architecture uh, and uh, building history, for example, was very important. Um, and it, it said something like, you only see what you know about Right when you when you have studied why things are constructed uh, a certain way, you see that actually in the real world out there, and I suppose it's very similar here too. Yeah, it's when you know like a lot of physics. It's like you can see the like in a in a way it's like bit boring if you know, like really know your physics. For example, some somebody else can like just look like what a beautiful sunset, like as it is. But then I start to like think, yeah, the light, like this wavelength reflects from this, yeah. like this. And it, it every, everything comes like, it's like kind of removes the like beauty and magic from the world when you know like how it works. Yeah, okay. So you have to surprise yourself once in a while also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, 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 you but you sort of didn't learn how to do, for example, film videos and stuff. What was, um, That was sort of a journey also. If you look at the videos, you see all the progress and there's uh, lots of equipment adding all the time to, to whatever you do. Do you have like a, a special, did you have a special aha moment, for example, when, when you started out and discovered that the second view, for example, was simpler or was a good addition to what you needed? Was that like hard for you to, to, uh, to learn the, the video stuff? I think, I think like... Uh... It was pretty easy because uh, the type of filming that I do is it's more like it's a technical thing. You mm -hmm. try to like get maximum amount of data about things that are happening. You ha you just have to document everything like really well on the camera. So it's like it becomes like technical task how I can like like see everything in great detail. And I'm I'm good solving technical things because I'm engineer. But then on the I think now I have started to think it's more like to make it like also look good in terms like artistic way. I I I, I think it's happened in like last year. I have started to think like like more about how it's going to look. Does the like look of the picture? Like, uh, does it work with the feeling that I want to reach here? Stuff like that. So I, I try to now like not just like capture maximum amount of data, but also like think about the feeling that I want to like get on the video and make the uh, like uh, cameras and stuff like that support the feeling. Mm -hmm. But for example, like uh, on dangerous stuff, It's really good to place GoPro like near of the action and in a way that it's going to like shake and fly away with the yeah. explosion. It 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 like you could have like really solid camera set up like far away with perfect picture, but it's it doesn't describe the feeling so well because like too perfect. You have to like capture the feeling of the mayhem happening there. Yes. So That's and, the like. And so what what you what you do is actually or what you want to create is that the camera is close, it shows uh, the initial whatever, then you see dust and then the whole thing is possibly lifted up and it's smashed against yeah. something and and that that footage it's something that you're also aiming for. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see. And it doesn't matter if the camera gets destroyed or something, or you could replace a lens later on. It's just a good piece of film that you created. 
Yeah, usually, usually if something gets destroyed, usually they're like the fact that something got destroyed. That's so good for the story. Yes. That it's usually a good thing when you break something because it's like, look how dangerous this was. We broke the window or camera or whatever. <laughs> usually it, it means like you are going to, the video is going to be so much better that you get like, you can buy a new camera or lens or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see what you mean. What we just talked about was also based on an evolution like of making a video or several videos every week. But it sounds like it's a quite a complex uh, operation now um, that you, your wife, and maybe some collaborators are, are, are running right now. It sounds simple right now, but it's not because it's so it's such a mixture of so many things. And I, th- I think that's what fascinates me right now. You have learned a lot on the job, but you have also a very, very strong sense of aims and things that that you go for and that you're trying to realize with your videos and you probably sometimes you have this moment where you don't get it so you try again and stay with it and do another experiment that probably works better in the way you intended to so i I think that's that's a very important part of what you're doing they keep doing it and keep building on what you have done before An interesting thing, because whenever I like talk about how I do something, for me, it feels like they're like, I'm doing like bare minimum and I use like very simple and crude tools. Mm -hmm. But then I talk to somebody that this is how I plan this. And then they're like, oh, you have, you are so organized. And I think I'm organized, (laughs) but, but like, uh, it's surprisingly how like, like, uh when you when you d- use so much time on one thing it becomes like so easy and like simple for you because you are doing it so much yes and then now i have i have like i, I do for example i do some like uh, uh social media consulting for companies and like marketing agencies and stuff like that and i have uh, like so sup- I'm, i'm really surprised that like there's like I thought that I'm like, because I haven't done any, I haven't gone into like real like film school or I'm just doing this with my wife. We are not like some like fancy big marketing agency in big glass house on the like center of city with like real adults doing adult stuff there. (laughs) But now it's like surprisingly, it's, it's really surprised at how like good tools and methods we have. And it feels like, really weird why like these adult people there are doing like they don't understand these simple things but i think they are they just feel for simple for me for some reason but it's like it's yeah i think i got a bit carried away there but i think my main point is that they like uh most stuff are surprisingly simple it just like feels really complicated outside mm-hmm For mm-hmm. example, we visited one company that built like uh, hydraulic valves when I was in university. And the first thing that they said on the company was that don't tell anybody that hydraulics is so simple. <laughs> they wouldn't pay so much for us if they knew that this is so simple. I think it's like true for most of the things that they are really simple. They just look complicated for outsiders. If you know what you're doing, it's not yeah, difficult yeah. at all, right? Yeah. Uh, the things that you do, yeah. yeah. There's a where, where I come from. There's a there's a saying about that in in dialect. I couldn't pronounce it or say it right now. Nobody would understand it, but yeah. it's 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 a very profound uh, um, knowledge or very profound thing to understand that I think because uh, then you have the. The, then the next step is to sort of package that in a way that uh, it creates some results and it uh, package it as a product, for example, if you are talking about expertise and knowledge that you are going to provide to the market sell as a product, for example, as, an, uh, as a consultant, as a coach, as a whatever, right? As something that is a non-tangible product, uh, I think is based on these things that we are talk- just talking about. Okay, I see. Well, that was very interesting. Uh, I think we have um, gotten a good glimpse in um, your sort of a 
process in uh, the way you sort of handle things and and approach things in the end it's always a mixture of uh, let's put it that way uh, genius on one side special personality uh stimulus um experience data uh fun fun yeah. um that creates and, and and experimentation that creates results results such as yours uh over a long time because it takes the time and the grind to do things also yeah did i miss <clears throat> something in my in my list just now i think that was pretty well pretty well all there and then and then it also takes like uh because it it's it's a lot of like uh, it also takes a lot of like tries to get the right idea and the concept. So one important thing is the fact that all the all the other ideas that me and my wife got, we didn't like stuck on any bad idea. We didn't use too much time on any of like things that didn't work. But then we maybe used little bit too little work on this one. So you have to have like, uh, if you want to like get great idea, you have to use the right amount of effort on each idea mm -hmm. to figure out does it work. Mm -hmm. Because if you use too little, then you might miss it. And if you use too much, then you don't test enough of ideas and don't have time to get the right one. And you you get frustrated uh, also if you take too long on a bad idea, for example. Yeah, but then also the like I think that's also important that you don't get frustrated because like eighty percent of the videos that we do they lose money. It's like almost everything that I do fails, and only the twenty percent like is success in terms of like revenue and like like good business idea. So also it's like if you want to be like this type of person and this type of business, you have to like be good at failing and don't get like stressed out if you haven't had like any viral videos in half a year. Just like keep making keep making stuff and hope that something works. I really like how this turned out right now, right? We started talking about crazy things on video and we sort of ended up in the real world of business ideas and statistics in a way. And and uh, I, I like that circle. That is that is not surprising to me, but it's, it's good that we have come to that point uh, in our conversation. Great, great. Lauri, you have um, new ideas coming up. Um, we don't need to talk about the new ideas because uh, whenever we somebody listens to this to this podcast, uh, uh, the videos will be out already. But do you have? Uh, could you say how long your your horizon is, or how long your list of ideas is for future videos? Is it like four weeks or or more? Ten weeks? Uh, two years? Uh, now I have like. Uh video ideas for about two months, like titles and thumbnail ideas for two months. And then I have I have like rough video concepts, like new new like video formats for like planned for next year. So I have like a rough idea that where, the, <laughs> where I can get 50 more ideas. <laughs> I have to come up some new like new directions to take the things. I have like those, but I haven't planned like any any actual videos. I just have like ideas for new tools and like things to test. What I also understand is you have sort of a, a long-term horizon for let's say 50 videos but if you discover on the way when doing the videos that something is for example very uh, interesting very funny very special very successful then you will sort of postpone some of these ideas and focus on the ones that work well yeah and also it has to be like i have to be interested on in the thing that i'm filming so I don't I don't have any like 
I don't have on my calendar that film this video on this day. I have to like wake up on the morning and feel that, hey, now I want to film this video. And then, because it's like, it's important for me to be like on the good mood on the video and interested of the thing. I think it like goes comes through the video if I'm not like interested on the things that I'm doing. So I always like, I just have like big pile of videos that I could do. And then I pick up the one that feels right for the moment. And then I have also like, I'll, I have like, uh, like business plan for like about two years. I have like, maybe I, I have like, for example, now I know that the, uh, YouTube is going to monetize the source on start of the end next year. And I, I'm planning to get how I'm planning, what should I do for a, that I'm ready for that opportunity. And then if I feel that I have time for some new business thing, then I start to wonder like, would this platform be good business opportunity or what I should do with this time? I, I try to plan for that also like a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Laurie, I'm very thankful to have met with you a, a creative, very creative entrepreneur that is doing fun stuff, surprising, sometimes scary stuff with physics in a way unlike any other, let's put it that way, physics channel that is working hard along with a very special collaborator, your wife, right? That's, that's an important part of what you're doing. And uh, I think that was, that was a very, very special conversation. And thank you very much for taking the time today for our talk. And I also always enjoy about talking the like process and everything. And it's funny, even if you are doing it all the time, I think it's like when you are like, I think the, like you can use term like fog of war. You are like inside of the trenches and doing the stuff. It's hard to see like the whole big picture. So it's good to like talk everything through like this now and then, and then you get like good, good picture what you are actually doing when you like take a couple steps up way and look it from like outside. So it's 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 always fun to talk about this. Thank you very much that you did today. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the 2.5 Conversations Connecting Innovators. You can subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. A transcript of this episode and additional information is also available. The link is in the show notes. My name is Klaus. I'm an innovation coach in Baden-Württemberg in the southwest of Germany. This is the 2.5.